and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're talking about Ryzen 3000, or Zen 2, as it's getting close to launch, which means there's a lot of information leaking out and things like that. So we're going to talk about all of that here today, and a little bit about Intel, which it's not looking too good for Intel right now. So first of all, it looks like some of the OEMs, you know, the motherboard makers and that, have been testing out the 12-core and 16-core Ryzen 3000 CPUs. I imagine this is like the 3700X and the 3850X. Uh, this is really good. They'll be testing them with their new X570 motherboards. Of course, Ryzen 3000 will still be AM4, so it will still work with your X470 and X370, or, you know, the B450 and that, the 400 series motherboards and the 300 series AM4 motherboards. It'll work with all of them. That's been confirmed now. I know for some reason people thought it may not. Uh, they will work. Of course, they will just need a BIOS update. So make sure you update the BIOS first before you try to drop in a new Ryzen 3000 CPU. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be in trouble. Uh, so definitely do that, but that has been confirmed. Now it's looking like these X570s are going to be quite a decent step up as well. It's looking pretty good. Uh, they're going to have things like PCIe 4.0. That's a good upgrade. I thought, you know, it doubles the bandwidth versus a 3.0. So I think that's going to be really good. And also the memory speeds as well. That's looking like a good uptick there. That's also kind of to do with the CPUs as well. But with uh, the 400 series motherboards, let's say like X470s and your Ryzen 2000 CPUs, you could mainly get up to like 3600 megahertz, like 3666 megahertz seem to be sort of up there um, you know most people i would say ran like 3200 megahertz 3400 megahertz i just got a new uh, silicon power memory kit for the ryzen rig uh, some nice turbine rgb memory so i chucked that and that's uh, 3200 megahertz memory and i think that's what a lot of you guys probably went for with the ryzen cpus you do want to use fast memory the way they work with the Infinity Fabric, they really do take advantage of fast memory. So you definitely want to run the fastest memory you can with your Ryzen CPUs. And that will be the case with Ryzen 3000 as well. But it's looking like it'll be able to handle up to 5000 megahertz uh, memory speeds. Now, that's in theory and I don't personally believe in reality that you would be able to get your memory up quite that high. Uh, with Ryzen 2000, I believe the theoretical limit was about 4,000. Uh, it was sort of like up to 4,000, and most people, most motherboards sort of support it up to 3666. But I would definitely say in some information coming out now that it'll definitely support like 4,000, uh, you know, maybe 4,400 megahertz memory, 4,200, you know, that type of thing. I can definitely see that happening. And that's going to be really, really good because those CPUs are really going to like that high speed memory. So this is going to uh, definitely increase the performance and it'll be another reason that maybe more people upgrade to uh, X570. But as far as those older motherboards, you are going to be able to use them with the 16 core and the new 12 core Ryzen 3000 CPUs. However, they may not be able to take full advantage of those CPUs, you know, some of the features that they may have. I think overclocking as well, especially on that 16 core part, is probably not going to work. But I would imagine it will be the same case as what we saw with uh, Threadripper, you know, 1 and 2, where they both stayed on the X399 platform, but of course there's a pretty big core count jump going from 16 to 32 on the top end parts. Uh, however, they would still work, the Threadripper, the TR2 CPUs would still work uh, on your X399 board, even if it was a more basic one that was designed way back when the Threadripper 1 parts came out, CPUs came out. Uh, however, it just some of the features didn't work or were disabled and you know overclocking wasn't really possible. So that's what I would imagine will be a similar case with Ryzen 3000. Speaking about Ryzen 3000, let's have a look at the lineup then and sort of how they've positioned the CPUs, at least from the information we have right now. So it's looking like the Ryzen 3 CPUs and Ryzen 5 CPUs are pretty much going to maintain their current positioning within the market in the sense of the Ryzen 3s will be entry-level CPUs, although looking at them, 
I, I kind of find it hard to say entry level when it's a six core, 12 thread CPU, you know, look at that 3300X. That's, that's gonna be pretty powerful. I don't know if entry level is the right word for it, but okay. And the Ryzen 5s are gonna go up to eight cores uh, and they're gonna be your value for money kings. I mean, look at the pricing there, even on something like the 3600X. Look at the core count, look at the clock speeds, and then look at the price. That is going to be an extremely good value for money CPU. So that's how I imagine it now. Uh, the Ryzen 3s maintaining the entry level price point and very good performance. The Ryzen 5s being the value for money kings. Then going up to the Ryzen 7s, this will be like this line. I think will be the ones that a lot of high end users will trend towards, especially that 3700X there. Very high clock speed, good core count. You know, 12 cores, 24 threads. That's that's good. Uh, but that high clock speed there and a reasonable price as well. So I would imagine this would be the one that a lot of people get. Uh, it'll be good for productivity, certainly, being 12 cores and having those clock speeds. I think it'll be the best one in terms of gaming performance, the 3700X, just given those clock speeds there. And yeah, it's looking really, really solid. So those, the Ryzen 7s will be very popular, I think, for just kind of like having the ultimate all-rounder. And then you have the Ryzen 9s. These were made to compete with Intel's i9s, now that Intel are putting i9s on their mainstream platform, and I guess they will continue to do so moving forward. These ones, I think, will be more aimed, well, certainly at enthusiasts, but more for productivity rather than gaming. Uh, I think the Ryzen 9s won't, but won't be quite as good for gaming as the Ryzen 7s will be. However, they definitely will be better at the productivity stuff because 16 cores... <laughs> And uh, if you're doing video editing, picture editing, maybe doing something in Blender, they're going to be very, very good for that. So my thinking from this current lineup and the information we have right now is I would say if you're just purely gaming, no productivity stuff, or maybe just very light amounts of productivity, then you're definitely going to be wanting to stick with those Ryzen 3 and Ryzen 5 CPUs. If you're doing a mix of productivity and gaming, or you just want the ultimate gaming performance and you're not so much worried about value for money, then the Ryzen 7s are gonna be very alluring, certainly to me as well. And then the Ryzen 9s will be for those people out there that maybe still do gaming, but they're more focused on the productivity side of things. And that's what uh, those people would go for. I also wonder how this will impact AMD's HEDT lineup, you know, the Threadrippers, obviously they have other benefits which you won't have on, uh, on the mainstream platform, quad channel memory and a bunch of other things. But that being said, the pricing wise and the fact that if you're wanting to build a more cheap productivity machine, maybe you're just doing editing, maybe it's for your business or something like that, then those 16 core Ryzen 9s that's going to get a lot of interest for those people out there. So it's going to be very interesting to see how all this plays out. My personal feeling of the ones that I'm sort of drawn to, that 3700X is really, that's drawing my attention for sure. But of course, we have to see what actually comes out and we have to do all the testing and then we'll be able to decide and see how good the CPUs actually are. Now let's quickly go over to Intel and see what they're up to. So Intel have been in quite a bit of trouble if you're not aware they've been having a lot of difficulty with their 10 nanometer cpus by a lot i mean a serious amount of difficulty there's just been so many delays i don't even know where to begin but it's looking like their 10 nanometer isolate cpus will be launching in june so next month this is good however they will only be mobile cpus this will just be for the laptops not for the desktops. It's looking like at this stage, their 10 nanometer desktop CPUs won't be coming out until next year at the earliest. And the fact that AMD will be sitting on seven nanometer CPUs from next month, and they will basically have like a year of I don't want to call it a monopoly, but 
it will essentially be that because I, I just can't, based off the specs that we have right now, I really can't see why anyone would buy Intel. And I'm not a fan. You guys know I'm not a fanboy. You know I'm very far. I have a, uh, I've run more Intel systems than AMD by a wide margin. But I, I don't know unless they come out with something really crazy. But I don't know with their 14 nanometer plus 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 CPUs. I just don't see it. There's only so far you can push that Skylake architecture. So it's leaving us in a in an interesting time period that we haven't been in for quite some time actually but i want to throw it to you guys that's enough out of me of the ryzen lineup right now which one are you looking at as like the main one that you would like to buy a lot of people surprisingly i thought the ryzen 5s would be the most popular but it's looking like a lot of people have interest in the ryzen 7s and ryzen 9s so maybe you guys have a lot more money than, than i thought because uh those cpus while they are still quite cheap for what you get i suppose when I look at things like the 3600X, I just think, wow, if you're just doing gaming, that's going to be an awesome CPU. So I want to throw it to you guys. So which one are you looking at? And also, uh, what do you think about the situation uh, with AMD and Intel, you know, that's going to be happening over the next few months? Are you, are you very psyched, you know, go AMD, you know, stick it to Intel, take away all their market share? Or are you someone that's like, oh, maybe this isn't so good if AMD pulls a huge lead over Intel. I, I do want to preface that by saying that Intel's 10 nanometer, once they do get it sorted on the desktop, it is looking very promising. So uh, once they get it sorted, it's going to be good uh, from everything I'm seeing right now, but they have to get it out first. So we'll see how it all plays out. Throw it to you guys as always. Let's, uh, let's have a discussion in the comment section down below. Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to Tech Showdown if you haven't already on this super hot. I'm sorry if I'm sweating. <laughs> it's such a hot day. It's like, I can't run my air conditioning. It's it's about like 33 degrees in here right now, 33 degrees Celsius, and I can't run my air con or else you guys complain because it sounds all noisy. So <laughs> I'm sorry if I look a bit hot right now. So thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you all next time.